Welcome to our third episode of the 2024 Academy Award Predictions Unknown, Not Them. Contrary to expectations, we are not the renowned EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown. He is a writer, director, actor, all-around great guy from state New York. And I'm just a podcast host who enjoys his fair <laughs> share of Pokemon. And, and you're just by- Ken. I'm just Ken something i don't know the rest of the song but i voted for (laughs) over the next couple of minutes michael will be making his predictions based on knowledge of the movie industry where i will be making predictions by pulling random numbers out of a hat to ensure that i win the fourth annual no not them oscar predictions 2024 Uh, Get ready to witness cinematic chaos as we talk about the last six categories on episode three. If you have not watched episode one and two, be sure to go back and watch them before you listen to today's episode, because we are going to, spoiler alert, talk about what we talked about in past episodes. Or you can just listen to this episode. Doesn't matter. I'm okay, because why? It's no, not them. Michael? Two episodes down, last one to go. Are you ready for Sunday? I am so ready for this. We are having a little gathering of folks. Everybody has to bring a different movie themed food. So my husband is making Oppenheimer atomic burger bites with American fixins. And just go. Just get anatomy it. of a far farfalle pasta salad. And I am doing bathtub shots because I found shot glasses that are bathtubs. And I'm so fucking excited for this. I don't don't... know. Please, please send us a photo of that so we can post it on our website and social media pages of these bathroom shots because I don't want want to. uh, Sure. I don't want to know what's in the bathtub shots, but if it's anything like Saltburn, the movie that you just seem to love, um, I would not want to go anywhere near that that, that party. It's going to be a white Russian. Again. Kahlua, Kahlua milk, vodka. That, that, that is not something you say on the show with two gay guys. It's going to be a white Russian. It's going to be stop. <laughs> um, we, can I just say we, for a second, um, as someone who's an American and as a Canadian, should you not be drink? you should not be drinking Russian vodka. Um, you should be drinking Ukrainian uh, vodka. I don't know if they actually make it, but if they do, support Ukraine. Salvo the Ukraine. Um, so, um, so you excited? I'm excited. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna be I'm the first excited. time that we're actually gonna be able to watch it live because every year we have to watch it like delayed a half hour, but this year we actually get to watch it live. So I'm excited. The only reason I get to watch it delayed is because usually we're doing something right before it starts. But this year it starts earlier, and I'm really looking forward to that because you know. A three-hour show is now going to be four hours because they're starting early. So we have a few, we have the last six categories to talk about here. And I want to start by talking about Best Original Screenplay. And the nominees for Best Original Screenplay at the 2024 Academy Awards are Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Maestro, May, December, and Past Lives. Michael, Michael, Michael. Who are your picks? Who? What is your pick for best original screenplay? That should have been Barbie. <laughs> Anatomy of a Fall. Really? Y- yes. Oh, I, I no, I thought you were going to go with something else. I'm shocked because I went with Anatomy of a Fall. So that's why I'm like, holy crap. Like this year might actually come down to like one or two votes here. Um, Anatomy of a Fall, the movie just was so good and i think it's not gonna get the recognition it deserves like i think if it was any other year sandra huller would most likely be the winner winner for that category she was so unbelievable i'm still not entirely convinced there won't be a vote split a vote split and see her win like it was unbelievable that film from beginning to end and I think that the one category that is just it not even iffy but is just mobile enough to give this French 
film a, a nomination is going to be original screenplay. And I think that they, well, we'll talk about it later with international film, but they didn't even submit it to international film. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, that's why it's not there. So I think that this film really missed a shot with that. Um, but I think original screenplay is going to Anatomy of a Fall. Who's your second pick? Do you mind me asking? Uh, no, I don't mind at all. I think it's past lives. Okay, so we did. Okay, so that's where we differed then. Okay. Because Would you my, pick May, December? No, The Holdovers. I thought it was a strong script. It was just a down to earth script. For the, and, and that's where my back and forth was holdovers or anatomy of a fall. But at yeah. the end of the day, like you said, I, I chose anatomy of a fall because I think it does deserve the recognition that it does need. And I think more people will see it after this win or hopefully another win as well. But I think uh, anatomy of a fall is going to win this category. And that's just my personal opinion and only my personal opinion. But to recap, because it is our show, uh, we, we are both going for Anatomy of a Fall for Best Original Screenplay. Now heading over to the Adapted Screenplay, because you know, they're different, because one's adapted and one's original, according to the great people at the Academy Awards. Uh, the Best Adapted Screenplay nominees are American Fiction, Barbie? Question mark? Oppenheimer? Poor Things? And The Zone of Interest. Now, I'm going to start off with this, because this was very challenging for me. Because I had it down to two. And okay. I'm, I'm concerned that I'm going with the wrong one here based on what I talked about in the last episode with Best Actor. I'm going with American Fiction. I'm also going with American Fiction. Are you really? I think this is the same issue, or not the same issue, the same thing with original screenplay. American Fiction was so good. Yeah. And I think that it's competing in a lot of the categories with things that just outpaced it, but its script is just brilliant enough that it can kind of eke itself forward. Cause I think with Oppenheimer and with Barbie, there's going to be a lot of like friction there, but I do think American fiction script was just breathtaking. And it was, it's a way to give it a nomination and give it a win for a category that like would make that it wouldn't be an out of left pocket win for it. Who was your second choice? My second choice was actually going to be poor thing. No, Oppenheimer. Let me, I, I'm a liar. Oppenheimer. Okay. So we, uh, because you never saw the zone of interest, right? No, that's tonight's movie. Okay. So after you watch that movie tonight, for those who are listening to this, we're recording this on a Wednesday and this is going to be coming out Saturday morning. But after you watch that episode, watch that episode, watch that movie, let me know because I was conflicted between American fiction and the zone of interest because hmm. I thoroughly kind of oddly enjoyed the zone of interest because of the story and everything that goes on in it. So I, I had a hard time, but I'm going with American fiction on this one because I think it, it was the better script overall. And I think the actors gave a better performance with the, the script provided. So to recap, we are two for two in today's episode. We are both going for adapted screenplay, American fiction. Alrighty. So now it's me taking over and we are going to probably be three for three with international <laughs> feature film. So the nominees are Io Capitano, Perfect Days, Society of the Snow, The Teacher's Lounge, and The Zone of Interest. Christopher, what did you watch you all think? five? No, I I, I only oh, watched. This is, this is right. You I watched, only watched none of the them. One. I watched none of them. <laughs> so for those who watch the show, who know us, know that if you get nominated for Best Picture, you're probably, and you get nominated for Best International Feature Film, you're probably going to win this category. With that being said, uh, I, I, I'm not speaking out of turn when I say this. Michael and I's prediction for best international feature film is The Zone of Interest. Yeah. Why? Because it was a freaking great movie. Now, if uh, Anatomy of a Fall was in here, I would have put Anatomy of a Fall over Zone of Interest. Very, very tight. If Anatomy of a Fall did submit and they, if they were nominated and did submit, I think you could have seen a very big split in this movie. Oh, I this think category. if you, 
if you saw Anatomy of a Fall here, I think that it would have put this category into a much yeah. more upheaval of play because you could see them both split the vote and like next thing you know, Io Capitano is the winner. Society of like, Snow. Yeah, like there was a, if Anatomy of a Fall was here, it would have been a very competitive category and it would have been just scrumptious to like yeah. do it. It would but, have actually been the first time that we went, I don't know where it's going to go. Yep. Yeah. But with this, it's like, that's also why I was like, I don't have time to watch all these films. I I can put the zone of interest here very comfortably and not feel any type of like sorrow that I may be picking the wrong one. And I may be, I will be pleasantly shocked if zone of interest uh, loses this category, but it's so many other nominations here that I, I think it's pretty locked in. Um, so to recap, both Chris and I using our very deductive, very crystal ball joint thoughts are three for three and picking the zone of interest for international feature film. Did you really talk about two gay guys using a crystal ball? What a bunch. Uncomfortable. <laughs> um, next, we have the animated feature film. And the nominees are The Boy in the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So, oh, I think it's me that has to pick first. I'm going with Spider-Man. I think the animation style was so interesting. I think that it's a pretty odds-on favorite right now with regards to like picking up tchotchke after tchotchke after tchotchke. And I, I don't know. It's just, it did it for me. Not in like, not as good as the first one, but it was fine. So I think we're finally four episode four categories in. We have our first split decision here because I'm going with he, uh, Mr. Hugh Hizo Makazawi, The Boy and the Heron. I just love the movie. I think it was fantastic. I think it was an overall brilliantly executed film. Um, I don't I I wouldn't be upset with Spider Man winning, but I don't think it is a better than the first and if it's not better than the first then i'm not supporting it so i'm going with the boy and the heron overall i think it was a fantastic film and i've always loved their animation style the studio ghibli's oh studio yeah ghibli. the, my big my big thing because i also thought about that i my big delay with it was um he rarely wins did he he lost for spirit of the way right yeah yeah, but he was not. He's only for... won once, and he's yeah. been nominated like four times. Yeah, I, I, he's no Shrek. Knowing that I know, knowing that Spider Man Three will be coming out here soon across the whatever multiverse or whatever you want to call it, I think they they should give it to the boy and the heron. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset, but I think the boy and the heron were was the better film in this category. Um. I think Nimona was the better film that has no shot at winning. And I loved that film. It felt very adult animated, which I liked about it. Like it wasn't necessarily like for children, which is sometimes how a lot of these movies feel, but I, I don't know. I, I really liked it. I really liked dreams? Nimona. Uh, yeah okay glad that we're on the same page there <laughs> yeah and the and the animation was ugly sorry sorry to those that liked it um i did like elemental i just sorry disney it just it's feeling half-baked at disney can we talk Di about that real quick while we're here disney is going through an existential crisis right now of epic proportions and i don't know if it's good bad or indifferent but it's just all feeling very half baked. And I know that like folks thought Wish might be here. We or, we talked about that, but like it's just, and the coolest thing about Wish was the animation style changing. Nothing else about that movie felt great. But the spine uh, singing just... wasn't great to you. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, at Disney, if Disney wants to get back on that competitive, you need to put out some bangers like frozen like uh uh, uh encanto like coco like the movies have not been moving yeah 
They they bit off way too much than they could chew, and they've just spread themselves too thinly. Yeah, it's that feeling like you need to put out four or five different things in each. Like a, you can't focus on one film and like one Pixar and like one Marvel and make sure they're stellar because we're getting eight hundred things and it's feeling very half baked. Um, but to recap. You, Chris, have chosen the boy in the Heron, and I, Michael, have chosen Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. All righty. And then getting into it, uh, the next category category is uh, Best Director, and the nominees are Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon, Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, and Justine Triette for anatomy of a fall so who are you going with hmm so i i took a few moments to think about this category and then i thought to myself well let's be honest who's going to win this and who should win this is what we should be asking ourselves right now who's going to win is oppenheimer and christopher nolan who Correct. should win this anatomy of a fall or Poor things. I loved that movie. Currently available on Disney Plus. Um, at Disney Plus in the UK, Hulu in the US. Why the UK? Why not Canada? I don't know. That's what the internet was telling me. UK and US. I'm assuming Canada is getting lumped into the US. I'm very sorry. We don't have Hulu. You don't have Hulu? Wait, what? We- have we discussed yeah. this before? Yeah, we discuss it every fucking episode and every fucking episode you have the- I'm always <laughs> shook. I feel like y'all, what? Disney, get your shit together. We don't even have Peacock. Well, you're not missing much. Um, but no, we don't have Hulu because Hulu and Disney Plus are the same entity up here in Canada. Um, then you probably have it on Disney Plus. Oh, no, we do. Assume. I'm just saying that you said UK and you didn't say Canada. And I'm kind of upset as a Canadian on this show. It's about time you give us some respect and you let us know that north of the 60 is where we do things. I don't know why we're Scottish now, but we are. <laughs> okay, Brigadoon. <laughs> just go. Um, yeah. Who, who so, are you going with? Oppenheimer. I just, it's like, I don't know. It's just kind of locked in, I feel. And I like to win. And I'm going to go with a movie I didn't like. <laughs> and you went with Oppenheimer. Did You liked it, though. I loved it. I thought it was better than Barbie. That was just my personal opinion. Okay. <laughs> so you so recap. To, to recap, both of us going with Oppenheimer. So to blow this out of the way, 23 categories later, we are finally, or 22 categories later, we are finally at the last category of the award season, and that is Best Picture for a Feature Film. And the nominees for the 2024 Academy Award for Best Picture are American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. Michael, shall you and I agree for the last time on this recording of who is going to win the 2024 Best Picture Award? Oppenheimer! (laughs) Shocker. It's won the PGA. It's won the DGA. It's won the fucking SAG. It's winning everything. What's that? What are you whispering? I think your sound is off. No, it's on. I just have to speak really loud. I was saying algorithm, 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 everything. Run the PGA. Who should win? Who should win? Oh, that's a very good question. Because like, So for those who watched our January episode or listened to our January episode, I, I did say that Barbie was going to win because it was probably uh, there's going to be a groundwell of support. That fizzled out day two after the nominations were announced and everyone went, oh, we're so upset that Gerda Gerwin and uh, Margot Robbie didn't get nominated. Oh, Ger- Greta Gerwig. Ah. And nothing really transpired from that. And now... Literally, we are 
four days away, one day away from this airing from the Academy Awards. And I am going with the odds on favorite that Oppenheimer is going to blow this Academy Awards out of uh, proportion and it is going to sweep the majority of the categories. Like the atomic bomb falling in New Mexico. I was going to say New York. Awkward. Um, that's the, a different movie. The atomic bomb. That, that's the 2016 presidential election. But I'm no, that's the Watchmen. I've never seen it. Can I just get through my goddamn fucking <laughs> monologue here? I no. Practiced this. <laughs> like Oppenheimer's bomb dropping in New Mexico, Oppenheimer will drop the bomb in the 96th Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and a lot of the categories that are technical. I think Oppenheimer is the clear front runner, and it will probably do something that a lot of a lot of movies have not done in some time and sweep lots of the categories. Not since Lord of the Rings have we will not have seen a movie sweep like Oppenheimer has swept. It is high time that Christopher Nolan, Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr. get their just desserts. Simmer down. Anyway. Um, I do think last year was a weird year too, because last year normally out of all of the best picture nominees, they try and give all of them one or two awards. Like they try to spread out the awards. Last year happen. only no, this year it did. The only two that don't have a single award from what we've talked about are Maestro and Past Lives. What do you mean Maestro doesn't have awards? Maestro has awards. We haven't we no, we haven't given it a single win. You and I haven't. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And we haven't given a, a lot of these. We haven't a, a lot of them. We gave at least one win to, yep. I feel like. Yep. So I, I think that that's where we're going to see a lot of like, it's but interesting Oppenheimer's to look gonna, at. Oppenheimer's going Oppenheimer's to do really well. But I think that what we're going to look at is past lives and maestro, unfortunately, just aren't keeping up. And it sucks because I really like past lives. And I feel like if we had seen uh, Greta Lee get nominated for Best Actress like she should have, and Celine Song get nominated for directing like she should have, we would have maybe seen Past Lives as a stronger contender. Um, it's just unfortunate because like, it's just, it, it was like that American fiction, um, poor things. Those are like th three of my favorites this year. Anatomy of a Fall. I, I'm going to be talking about that movie for a while. Please tell us how you think of The Zone of Interest after watching it tonight. Yeah, I am excited to see that one. And that's really like the last of the best pictures that I have to watch. And, and I can fully admit I haven't yet. But like, it's... My husband has done better this year watching the movies too. He normally like gets bored after half the best pictures and like walks in and sees me watching one and will like watch it from his phone or sleep and be like, I heard half of it. Great. Um, but this year he's been very invested in it too. The movies this year were good. So to recap, before we talk about what, what is going to happen on Sunday uh, for best picture, both of us are going with the Christopher Nolan masterpiece Oppenheimer. Um, so I've got to ask, uh, to sort of round off before we let each other go here, because we've uh, been speaking for the last three days over recording. Totally. Every single day we've chatted every single day, every single day. We just we just enjoy wearing the exact same clothes for three days in a row, everyone. Um, for continuity. Exactly. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we'll take them on the beaches. We'll take them on the streets. <laughs> um, any big surprises you expect this year? I hope not. <laughs> I want to win. <laughs> no, but any any big surprises of what's going to go on at the Oscars, or you think it's going to be a very tame night after the whole get your wife get your mind wife's name out of your mouth? I feel like the Oscars have just been veering closer and closer towards predictability, and like especially with how similar this year you and I our categories lined up, like it's becoming very similar. And I don't know if that's because fewer and fewer movies are getting actually nominated. Cause like you could watch the best pictures and pretty much knock out 
most of the categories completely. Like there's very few categories that have things like a Golda or uh, a Napoleon in it. And like, it's just, I don't know. I want the, I want the Oscars to feel a little less predictable. And I don't know how you kind of do that with the movies that have been coming out. Cause it's like, every year it's fewer and fewer movies that you would look at and watch and go, wow, this isn't actually a good contender. Unless you start factoring in things they don't want to give awards to, like, uh, you know, Top Gun, Maverick, or things of that variety. You- Argyle would be one that I would be interested to see get a nomination because I think it's an incredible film. Well, can we can we just make prediction right now that next year uh, Denis Villeneuve is probably going to sweep just like uh, uh, Christopher Nolan swept this year? For what film? Dune 2. Oh, yeah. If it even gets nominated, because sometimes oh. they just say fuck you to sequels. It will be nominated. It will be the Lord of the Rings next year. I We'll put money on it. Or they'll wait for the third because they're doing it as a trilogy now. But the third isn't going to be for a few years. So I think they're going to, because everyone is raving about Dune right now. I haven't seen it yet. Zendaya is expected to potentially even get nominated. I I hope, you know, that's my girl. I know. And I disagree with her. So. That's my girl. Don't talk about my girl like that. That's I love Zendaya. Um, One last thing before I, I want to let yeah. you go here is: Do you next year there's going to be a new category involved? So there will be 24 categories that we'll be talking about next year, and it's called the best uh, cast. Act- really? Cast. Oh, finally. Yeah. Yes. So, do you think that might split up these potential like? Everyone gets one if you're best actor and best supporting actor from the same role movie. So we're going to give it to you like it last year for everything, every, everywhere, all at once. No, last year it would have gone to women talking. No, but like, that's what I mean, right? You would have been able to acknowledge an entire cast instead of, because I yeah. think there's categories that people would have gone. I wish this person was nominated, but unfortunately they weren't. And if like, William, like for past lives this year, William Defoe, Mark Ruffalo, Emma Stone, poor things, good, uh, poor things, sorry. All good people, all good performances. I don't think they were the best, but together they were a great ensemble cast. And that's what I like in watching a lot of these. Cause like women talking um, triangle of sadness last year, they were ensemble casts. You didn't see them get nominated in the acting categories because it's like, how do you pick one person or two people out to throw them into? I would even go so far as to say Oppenheimer or Killers of the Flower Moon for this year. Like there's, especially last year with women talking, like that just stood out to me. It's like, how do you, the, the one person you would nominate that you could like stand out nominate was the one singular man in that. And you're not going to nominate the one man in a movie called women talking. Yeah. So it's like, I think that's a great, incredible category to add. Um, I think they should look at adding cer- some categories. I think stunt like stunt work is a category I would love to see added. Tom Cruise can finally get his Oscar. <laughs> um, I also, I know I've talked about this with you, uh, especially this year. I am normally I'm a I am if not first a child actor hater. But that being said, this year I was pleasantly shocked by a lot of child performances to the uh, stand out immediately Anatomy of a Fall. That boy was acting his fucking face off. Uh the holdovers, that man was that child was acting his fucking face off. And the in cre- the creator, the little girl playing the little th- little alien robot thing, but brilliant, 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 brilliant. It's like it. I think that we just need to start recognizing child actors, and and y'all don't want to put them. The Academy does not want to put them in these actual actor, actress, etc. categories. So give them their own category, mix it, just. Five children who gave fantastic performances, give one of them a tchotchke. Wouldn't they be bringing that category back? Because they, didn't they have that for a while? Nope. Like, isn't that I why, don't like, think so. I thought that's why Shirley Temple won for a, like a long time ago. 
Did Shirley Temple win? Yeah, she won an honorary Oscar. Oh, honorary. No, different. I'm not honorary. I'm, uh, best child actor. She won for six years old. She won. Oh, Marley Matlin won an Oscar. Where's Shirley Temple? Oh, the Academy Juvenile Award. That's what it is. Okay, I apologize. It has had, and it's not every year. It's because I see Shirley Temple, Dina Durbin, Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland. Like it's only been in 10 years and it's not even been every single year. I think it's something they maybe need to add every single year. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, the last time, last time someone won that was for Pollyanna. Oh, Pollyanna. Yeah. Haley oh, Mills. Paul. Um, Michael. As always, it is a pleasure to sit down with you three days in a row to talk about movies. It is an honor and a pleasure, and I'm so grateful for your friendship, your camaraderie, your ability to accept that you're going to lose this year because I'm going to win finally, or we're going to tie, uh, as we always do. It is a friendly wager on what is going to go on in the great Oscars 2024. And then we'll be back at the end. Actually, we might, we might be back later on in March, depending on if Michael and I's schedule can match up because as of April, I kind of get packed. But uh, I, I'm, uh, in April, I'm sort of busy with everything going on in the world. Um, with travels and work and all that fun stuff. And I'm losing my train of thought because I just had amounts of radiation pumped through me this morning and I'm not sort of thinking straightly, straightly, correctly, forwardly, gaily. Rockin'. Um, Michael, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you. It's, it's great to discuss these things. Uh, the wager is on. The wager is set. Now we shall see who is the, well, the cinematic mastermind of the no not them show for the fourth year in a row or for the first time in four years interesting i mean that was a journey we'll see what happens i the king can be dethroned if there's a year it'd be the year that you picked all the same ones as me i was a dig i'm sorry that was an easy dig so for those who have been watching for the last three days, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. As always, stay informed, stay engaged, and remember, this has been No, Not Them. Happy Oscars, everyone. <laughs>